Hey, hey developers, today we're gonna look at Vue 3.0. We're gonna look at the RFC for Vue. And also, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about kind of the controversy with Vue 3 uh, that happened a few days ago. So if you don't know, Vue has this RFC that's been out usually pretty much since May 30th. But there was a hacker news thread that opened up and people were starting to think that Vue 3 is almost like Python 3 where it was like a complete rewrite or going from Angular 1 to Angular 2. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, kind of get that all strained out for you guys. And we're just going to look at some code examples of what Vue 3 will look like. It's still a work in progress. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and we'll keep talking about this. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue in Action book published by Manning. I'm also, I do a lot of Vue tutorials on this channel. I'm not a part of the core team, but I know a lot of the core team members. I'm also a part of the Views on Vue podcast. So I think I, I'm okay to talk about this and, and what I've seen so far. So if you don't know, Vue 3 is in RFC state. So it's not set in stone, but people are talking about it and we do have kind of an idea of what it'll look like. So before we get into the specifics of it, there was this hacker news, uh, hacker news thread that opened up a few days ago and people were really confused. They thought Vue 3.0 would be some sort of breaking change that would completely break 2X and that you would have to completely rewrite your app for 3.0. And Evan actually ended up responding to this thread. It's probably pretty hard to see. Let me see here. I can make it a little bit bigger. So basically he said, there's a lot of FUD in this thread. The API is purely, purely additive to 2X and doesn't break anything. 3.0 will have standard build, which adds the API on top of 2X and opt-in lean-in build, which drops a number of 2X APIs. And that this is an open RC and they're willing to change at any time. So let me just get that out of the way. Vue 3 is not breaking 2x. There is a lean build that kind of deprecates some of the 2x APIs, but it's completely additive um, as they mentioned here. So if you go into here, the first thing they say in the RFC is that this new API is 100% compatible with current syntax and purely additive. And I think that's really scaring people. I think ever since Angular 1 went to Angular 2 and Angular 2 pretty much broke Angular 1, a lot of front end developers are kind of nervous about upgrades nowadays. So be rest assured, this isn't like Python 3 versus Python 2 or Angular 2 versus Angular 1. This is completely additive. Although you can um, kind of move faster by creating the lean build, which does deprecate some of the older stuff. And by the way, 2x option compatibility will be kept through entire 3x lifecycle. And of course, this is not set in stone yet. They are, this is a request for comments, so it could change of course. And there's a couple things. This is lead to spaghetti code. Nope. The class API is much better. So the one thing is they kind of had a debate, like if they should view three should be based over the class API and they decided not to. And some people are comparing view three or at least this RFC to react in some ways. And they enter, they mentioned that right here. This looks like react. Why don't I just use react? And by the way, your template syntax, is exactly the same. So you're gonna have all your same directives, v if, v4. A lot of people like that style. I personally enjoy it. We're not requiring people to use JSX or uh, a render function. And it says second, if you use React, you most likely use React hooks. This API is certainly inspired by React hooks, but it works fundamentally different as rooted in Vue's own reactivity system. And it believes the API addresses a number of important usability issues in React hooks. So what it's saying here is if, it's very functional based, this Vue 3.0, and it has some similarities to React hooks. So if you're a React developer, that'll make sense to you, but it certainly doesn't mean that Vue 3 is React. So here is an example code. So you have like they have this count and this plus one object or plus one variable here. You still have an increment. So the biggest thing I've seen here is now you have this setup options. So instead of having all your um, all your watch and your props and your lifecycle hooks all in their own separate objects, now it's all within inside the setup object. This is how view three will look as of now. 
So you have like this reactive state, you have this, you can do your computer properties right in here. Your methods are right in here. Your watch, actually watch has changed quite a bit. And so you can do your watch variables, which are a little bit different than computer properties and look like your lifestyle hooks. Um, for example, your lifestyle hooks are in here too. Here's on mounted. And then inside the setup, you actually return this count plus one in increments. So you're actually returning it from here. So it kind of simplifies it all. It's all in this setup hook, this setup function. Um, here's another good example that Evan created just uh, recently. So here's a little bit more complicated. So remember, you still have your, your same template. If you're not, if you didn't like this inside view two, well, that's not gonna change in view three. You still have your same V4, your same kind of template syntaxes. This is branches and branches. You still have this like binding of models and values and that hasn't changed, but you can see here, here is the actual code. Here's like the fetch API here. So the old API would look, look like this. You have this data object, by the way, in view three, the data object is completely gone. You're not gonna see that any longer. And then you have this return where you're, this returns an array, this returns this string called master, commits null. And then here's like a created lifecycle hook that actually fetches the data, which is this right here. Actually fetch data is, well, it would be somewhere else. I'm not sure exactly in this example. Oh, here it is, fetch data right here. Um, and then this watch sets this current branch to uh, fetch data here. So this is basically watched. And then here you have this fetch, fetch API to grab some data. So now the new API looks like this. So you have this setup. Remember, everything's inside this setup now. You still have current branch and use this. This is a special new thing inside view three. It's called value, which I'll talk about later. You have commits. Once again, this is like new reactive variables, current branch and commits. You have this watch where it's grabbing the fetch and you still have a return statement inside your setup with whatever data. This would kind of replace your data object. So now you're returning your branches, current branch commits. Here's a, a counter. So like if you're just doing a counter, count and double. So now you can have all these different functions, values. You have a computed function here, incrementing, and you're returning your count, double, and increment. So computed property works the same way where you just times it by two. But you can, these are basically their own functions outside of here. Uh, here's a grid component. Once again, you have this props, data, and computed property. The new API in this here, once again, you actually, this setup has a bunch of variables that can go into here, has props and has a context. And you could see it's a little bit different, but it's all within inside here, this setup. You can actually probably take this outside the setup if you wanted to. And here's the return right here. So let's take, there's a few more examples. I'm not gonna go through them all, but you could see how it's quite a bit different. So if you go back to the RFC, you can see some of the motivations of why they wanted to redo this in 3.0 via the mixins. Um, they didn't really like mixins or higher high order components and renderless components via scope slots. So there were some problems with it. They didn't really like namespace clashing or performance. Um, bundle sizes, it's easier to make things tree shakeable if you, for future API additions, if you use function-based APIs. And so here's the, the crux of the new changes. It's setup. So now you have this new setup that actually um, has a props inside of it. And you have this context object, which has all your adders, slots, refs, emit, parent, root on it. So you pretty much do everything inside this setup. State, instead of returning some uh, data object, now you just return inside setup your different objects or whatever you want to put inside your template. And uh, you can still do computed properties. Now it mentions value here. So you see it's import value from view. So we can use the value API. So calling value returns a value wrapper object that contains a single re reactivity property dot value. The property points to the actual value the wrapper is holding in the example above a string. So this is a way you basically make a reactive object in using view, you have to use this value property. And it mentions why you need value wrappers because of the different types inside 
inside JavaScript and how value unwrapping works. So that might be a little bit trickier when we start working with that. You can also use it with manual render functions. If you've ever seen this H, you can create a, like basically a render function. You don't have to have a template at all. And then computed values look a little different. Um, now watchers is a little bit different too. It's an API provide a way to perform side effects based on reactivity state changes. And they give examples of that, watching props. I'm not going to go through all, th all these because the video is getting a little bit long. But you can guys, I'll leave a link in the description below. So watch it. watchers use it a little bit different. And you can even stop watchers. And there's, little, there's callback timing, more watch options. So here's the lifecycle hook. That's another real big change. So now all your you import in on mounted, on updated from view, and now you can use them inside your setup block. There's a little bit of dependency injection. So you can, in, this is how you do it, inject inside view. Um, you can provide a value, you can make it reactive. That's how you, with the, the value, that's how you do add the reactivity. And it looks like in this, they have this descendant where they injected the counter symbol. So inject will also return a value raptor and the binding be reactive. And by the way, one big also reason they're doing this view three with this more function-based API is because it'll be really easy to use with TypeScript as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, type inference mentions, yep, TypeScript. We need to wrap combo definition of function call. And I'm not gonna read all this, but it's easier to do props and typing using TypeScript, um, required props. So now props are passed into the setup object. You can still define them. You still define them outside of it, but it's passed into the props and you can do things with it. And you can still do complex props type. You can depending ejection typing. And it says mentions a few, uh, a few drawbacks, but they're not gonna do the class API that's been dropped. And so they have an adoption strategy is they're gonna have the standard build, which is compatible with 2.x API. And then, but if you don't want everything, you there's this lean build, which is only a subset of 2x. So this is kind of the confusion. People thought that if you that the lean build was the only way to go and that you're gonna have to rewrite your whole components inside this new setup object and it would break everything, but it's completely additive at this point. And so the lean build removed the data, computed methods, watch, provide, inject, mix ins and extends. So if you are creating a brand new view 3.0 app, then you wouldn't want to use the data computed, the old school computed methods. You would want to do it with all, all within the setup function. But if you are kind of updating a, an old app, then you would want to use the standard build and it's completely additive. And then over time you can start migrating to the new way of doing things, which still will take time. And then they have a few examples here with the new API. So I, so the way I think about this, this is a great new direction that Vue 3 is going. I like it how they aren't going to break everything, that it's going to be additive. But if you want to be, if you don't want the old way, you can get the lean build and not, and not use the old way. So you have an option. It's definitely, if you are upgrading to 3, I think in the long term, you'll need to start migrating all your components over to this new style. I think for the most part, you could probably cut and paste some stuff into a setup block and you'd probably be okay in some instances. Other ways, you're, other, other things are gonna definitely change like some of your watchers and your computer properties will probably need to be changed as they move them, as you move them into the setup block. But from what Evan, you said up through the whole three life cycle, it's gonna be completely additive. So they're not going to deprecate everything. Um, right away. So you have plenty of time to migrate over to the new style. So I want to hear what you guys think. What do you think about this new view 3.0? Leave a comment below. Thanks.